Hey there, I came on a little bit early, two minutes early, to say hello and just let people know I'm starting today's live show in a few minutes. So I'm gonna hang out uh, till around two and then get this started. Today's topic, um, we're gonna be talking about what white folks can do every day to help make uh, everyday life less frustrating for black Americans and people of color. Hi, Leslie. Hi, Mark. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I'll get started in just a minute. If you have any questions or anything, feel free to go for it. I really appreciate the support having you watch. I'm hoping the audience will, the uh, viewers and my friends will give their input because the point is to get the information from you guys, not from me, <laughs> get you guys talking. So we'll get started in just a minute. Hi, Bob. If you know anybody who you think might benefit from joining in. Oh, thank you, Mark. I appreciate it. Hi, Chris. Thanks for watching. Um, we'll get started in just a minute. <laughs> okay, I did not put that. <laughs> Somebody's on my page. Just about to get started. you know anyone who would want to join in and give their input and just tell their story or what really bothers them or just what white folks can do. <laughs> Hi Bob, I knew it was you. Thanks. Because I'm not typing anything. But just to, uh, I don't know, vent or maybe get what they feel matters out there. I'd love to hear what people think. Because everything I do is for my, as kind of like an attempt to educate white America. So let's get this started. Um, hello and welcome to Real Lives with Angry Soccer Mom. Hi Earl, thanks for watching. The goal of the show is to have an open conversation about racism and encourage white Americans to educate themselves about our real racial history. And what I really want to do is get people talking so that I talk less and your voice is heard more because um, that's what matters I want white America to hear the truth from you okay so until we can unite until historically marginalized groups and their allies can unite and deconstruct systemic racism there are a lot of things that can be done to be supportive so today's topic is about how white people can make everyday life less frustrating for black Americans and other people of color. So I want to hear from you. Um, these are simple things. They don't even require knowledge of, hi Leslie, they don't even require knowledge of our true racial history. You can almost know nothing, just being human. So today's topic is essentially about being thoughtful and cognizant of the added burden and tremendous stress that a lot of our brothers and sisters of color are under simply by having to live in a culture that rewards whiteness in every area and currently houses the de facto leader of the modern KKK. You know who I'm talking about. Um, I can't imagine in my lifetime a, a, a time that would be more stressful. So um, please chime in, say what you want, and I will be, if I don't understand it, I will ask, ask questions and uh, go for it. So don't be shy. I mean, the fact is, Legislating equality is imperative when people refuse to act human. That's kind of what I call it. But the problem with it is legislation is, is great and absolutely necessary, but it doesn't truly change someone's heart. They're being forced to follow the rules. And that's where education comes in. White America needs to be educated so they buy into it and get it. It's not that they're going to be saviors. It's not that they're going to be, you know, the leader in, in this great uh, revolution of, of allowing liberty and justice for all. It's that 
they need to step up to the plate and help and support. It's, it's the least we can do, and it's called being human. Hi, Mark. I want to read what you have to say. Some of them don't want change, and I had to tell a yeah, he had to, Mark's saying some of them don't want change and he had to tell a guy off a few minutes ago. And, and here's the thing, I absolutely, excellent point. And I think in today's, you know, current culture of total divisiveness, um, that's a great point. You're going to run into tons of people who are like, I love this. I love racism and I love having me be up here and everyone else be, I mean, they love it. They encourage it. They promote it. They're, they're overtly racist and proud. And honestly, I mean, everyone does what they want with those people. I don't, I don't even bother with them. I don't waste my breath. And I know a lot of people think, oh, that's not right. But I don't know. That's just my take on it. What do you guys think? I mean, I want to waste or waste time. I want to, hi, Anthony. I, I want to, hi, Kendall. I want to spend my time on people who, who actually are ignorant, not evil or cruel. Yeah. Melan <laughs> melanate, yeah, that are exactly, um, yeah, they, they're exactly, um, they're, they're aware of their behaviors. They are purposely doing it. This is not some subconscious thing. They, they're having fun. They're enjoying it. Um, Chandra, they aren't just proud. They're afraid because white people will become, yes, exactly. Yes. Let me just read your whole, yeah, they're, they're afraid. They're, they're not, they aren't just proud. They're actually afraid because white people will become the minority in a few years and they know it. And they're afraid that, God forbid, maybe, hi, hi Steve, that white people, you know, that, that white people are, are, are going, uh, people of color and black people are going to treat them the way white people treat them. And it's like they absolutely know and they're scared and maybe they should be. I always tell people, you know, I tell these deniers, these, these heavy deniers that uh, you're just lucky that people of color and black people just want equality, not revenge. I mean, that's a, obviously kind of a cliche thing to say, but it's, it's true. I mean, that's just my take, but anyway. Hi, Chris. Hell, oh, hell, thank you. Hell yeah. Um, melanated. They are aware of the chaos they've created over... Absolutely. They, some of them are... I don't know... I don't get them. Personally, I will spend my entire life trying to get why anyone would do this, but that's... I, I, don't, I don't get it. I will, I will die not getting this. But um, so anyway, like I was saying, legislation is imperative. I mean, to force people to, to do the right thing. If they won't be human, they need to be forced to be human, unfortunately. But it doesn't change their hearts. And people who truly want to be cruel to their fellow humans seem to find a way at very subtle, you know, like, like I always tell the, the real um, beginners to, to learning about this is you're, you don't recognize the racism a lot of times because you're thinking of the old-fashioned stuff like, oh, a cross is burning and although we are getting some of that back right now, um, people are getting emboldened obviously. Um, this stuff's subtle, microaggressions, just little things here and there, 10, 15, 20 times a day, little things that just destroy yeah, Shand Chandra is saying, sadly, I don't think empathy can be taught. Yeah, I, when I say educated, I mean, right, I don't know if empathy can be taught, but I'm also hard pressed to believe that this many white people have this like actual antisocial personality disorder where they, they, they literally cannot learn empathy. It's, I don't know, I, I like to, I like personally to believe that, that it's that they don't, they don't know the truth and they've been bra almost brainwashed. I don't know, but yeah, you're right. You, I mean, there are certain people, they don't, okay, Melanie, they don't think that we are really human according to the constitution that we're, th right, right, right. They still, and that we're uh, three fifths of, a hu of being human. So where's the other two fit? Okay. Yeah. I, you, you, what you're saying, I think, is, is and tell me if I'm wrong, um, Melanie, that, that they believe in the Constitution before, um, you see, I don't know if a lot of white people even get this point. Let this sink in. Our Constitution that governs our entire nation, we had to have an amendment made to allow black people 
to be human under our laws. Let that sink in for a minute. I mean, it's, it's almost surreal. But yeah, I think I know what you mean. Hi, Lloyd. So, um, my hope is that people will comment and, yeah, and Anna is saying, she's right, they don't, they don't see us as fully human. And apparently, it's probably true. I mean, I don't know, but um, Lakeisha, thank you for being here. They know, let me see, they, um, they know they just don't care because they're not emo emotional when it comes to my life. Yeah, they, they want to give you, exactly, they want to give you non-human status um, or you're, you're, you're not like us, you're, you're, we're like them, so that they don't have to be sensitive and, and empathetic and to their fellow humans. It's, I mean, that's obviously, you know, a common thing over, over time that people have always, always done is make someone you want to treat like shit subhuman. And then you can just go for it. Like, um, I was watching Dr. Joy say this, um, I don't know if that's her real name, that's what I call, um, she was explaining that um, Thomas Jefferson, just a video I watched, it was unbelievable how him, this educated, educated man, looked at black people as subhuman, admittedly. I mean, he wrote all about it. And it was so, he, he said they didn't have, they weren't sensitive, you know, like other, like real people. I mean, it was disgusting. And this is supposed to be an educated person in the day. Just think what common folks who didn't know anything, you know, weren't educated in, in the least. I mean, it's been a theme. Um, us, oh, Anna, sorry, I knew what you meant. Um, Kendall, it started with Darwin and the racist of that era. Yeah, I mean, scientific racism is, as we, everybody knows now, ludicrous. But, you know, obviously, as we know, um, in the day of the internet, and, and if you want to believe something, you will find something to back it up even if it's cruel and sick and it's i think in my my humble opinion it, it's simply fear people are afraid to delve into themselves and say you know what my thoughts aren't really good i'm thinking some pretty shitty things and i need to get my act together it's like they won't drop their egos so uh dennis thank you for being here let me read what you wrote um my favorite li oh thank you speaks out and the truth keep speaking the truth even if they don't want to listen thank you so much and appreciate the support and people who are watching I don't want to plug myself but this means so much to me being able to talk and hear the real voices of real people living this I want people I kind of have no shame if you know people if you if you care and believe in what I'm doing I truly believe it's with all my heart it's time for white America to step up to the plate it's way past time and if you want to share my stuff and just say this lady knows what she's talking about or if you believe in me, I really appreciate it because there's a fine line for me as a white woman going, um, oh, share my stuff, share my stuff. You know, it's, it's all about me. But I need to get to white people. I need them to know that it's way past time. And so I won't go on and on, but I appreciate your support. I really do because the most pathetic thing is, and I know I'm going way off topic and I'll get back, is it's pathetic. People will listen to me rather than the actual people of color, black Americans, brown American, I mean, brown people, indigenous people who live it every day. That's just ludicrous. But I know for a fact that's what they do. It's like, it's, it's like brainwashing. So I just wanted you to, oh, we got stuck here. I just wanted everybody to know, thank you so much. Leslie, it's hard for white people to see people of color struggle when they've, oh, let me write, okay, you are along. Thanks, Leslie, you were along. I'll read it. I love you. Okay, it's hard for white people to see people of color struggle when you've been in power for so long. If there's a solution, it has to come within the white community by standing up for people of color. They have a saying that if you see something, say something. If enough white people would stand up for the unjust things going on in our community, then slowly but eventually there will be a change. Just my, I couldn't, that's what, that's why you get the big bucks. <laughs> Leslie, 100 and billion 10%, the biggest number possible, infinity, agree 100%. As each person starts to step up to the plate and 
it doesn't have to be a guilt thing. It doesn't, you don't have to be mean. You, you can just, it's the truth. It's the truth. Thank you. Thank you, Lloyd. <laughs> I appreciate it. And at Leslie, they, cre yeah, exactly. Melanie, they, we created the problems. We help allow them to stay. And, oh, it's okay. Don't ever worry about that, Lloyd. That's fine. Um, we perpetuate them. We remain ignorant. We, and it's not, everybody looks at it as such a terrible, terrible thing to think about, but it's not a terrible thing to think about if you're thinking about it so you can help. I mean, it's a terrible thing to not think about. Um, I'll have to say it again. I hate to repeat and repeat, but it's like walking by someone who's really struggling to swim in a pool and you say, come here, I don't give a shit. I didn't build the pool. It's like, you gotta be kidding me. Or how about this one? I didn't shove them in. I mean, that's basically what white people do. And I'm not trying to guilt people into this. It's just common sense. I mean, I don't know. It's just common sense to me. So I will not, I will try to get off my little soapbox here and go on. I just, I just appreciate everybody listening and watching. So until this regime, regime, excuse me, is overthrown and until we have further, you know, to make, make it possible for that to happen. Education is the key to getting our culture to the point where everybody's like, yeah, we're not going to put up with this crap, you know? Uh, oh, thank you, Lloyd. Sharing is caring. <laughs> Shared. Thank you. I appreciate it. Kendall, think in these terms. Amorosa is considered not credible for outing Trump. Yet Steve Bannon is rearing his head is wearing his head again and he's not thought of as immoral or oh I know it's it's Kendall it, people need to start acting human I mean right now it's this whole regime and I call it a regime and I don't mean to be funny it's a regime I mean it's out of control it's people have normalized the the insane and that's just my very you know a very uh, outspoken opinion. Anna, check out the Brene Brown's Empathy versus Sympathy. Okay, thank you. And you know what? If you could post it on this uh, on this feed at some time, that would be awesome because I want people to have resources to you know look back into. But um, so while you're thinking while you're thinking of examples, I'm gonna get into discussing um, some of the things that I've been told over the years. You know, get the ball rolling here with by highlighting a few things that kind of stand out. Thanks, Anna. Appreciate it. Um, stand out as just simple, everyday, common sense things that white folks can do to, not to cure, you know, not to save the world, but thanks, Kendall, not to save the world, not to be the, the white hero, but just common sense about how to be human and how to be, you know, a good citizen. Or I don't know how to put it. I mean, other than that, just... To be a, a good, to feel good about yourself. I don't get how people can't feel ha, can feel good about themselves, not educating themselves about this. You know they see it. It's it's everywhere. Or maybe they just, I don't know. Going off topic again. Back I go. So the examples that I'm going to talk about are things that people have told me and I've read about and you know confirmed and and they're not everybody's thing that bugs them. But I'm just going to get the ball the ball rolling here, and you guys need to tell me. What are the things white people can do? I want to know. The first one is a kind of a personal thing. It just, it enrages me personally because it's so cruel. It's, it's just cruel. And it's, it's kind of a best practice, I'd say, um, and very common. And to put it bluntly, I'll just say it. When you're having a conversation with black people or indigenous people or brown people or people of color when you're having a conversation about race or racism and, and inequality and all that your opinion does not weigh equally to their day in and day out experience of living in a world created for and catering to white people <laughs> thank you anthony <laughs> thank you i wish but okay so your opinion i appreciate it your opinion is not equal to theirs and i think it's extremely important to know this that you think your opinion is and I'm not trying to put white folks down or or anything it's just 
these people are living the pain of reality. And to say your opinion is more valid is, it's just, what a slap in the face. What a, I mean, anyway, I could go on and on. To me, it's analogous to a person who went to the Apollo 13 movie and now thinks they know more than the astronaut who went to the moon. I mean, it's, hi Clyde, thank you for watching. Um, it's embarrassing. It's like, it's incredible privilege on steroids. Um, people, white privilege makes it so we, we don't even question it. We're like, well, that, they're crazy. What you're doing is you're denying, thanks Anna, you're denying the, you're denying someone their feelings. Not just their little feelings, but feelings that have, I don't know, a, a thousand tortured, a thousand, a million tortured lives behind. The history is so huge. Lloyd, that is where the disconnect is. They don't care our pain, nor do they understand it. Right, ex you know what? They don't care and they don't know because they don't want to know. And, I, I, and that's just my take is they don't want to know because if they really, really cared, they'd learn the history, the history that, you know, the whitewashed history that was kept out of their schools. They would learn the truth and then make an educated assessment if they're that cold that they can't see their fellow humans, you know, basically being afforded total inequality and abuse and death. And, you know, a lot of people, it, they, it doesn't even get to that point because they can't bear to handle it. They can't handle it. I'm sorry, it's just true. So when people deny the reality of people who live it every day and see it every day, that just makes me insane. And, and you know, this isn't about me, but everyone has their pet peeves. Um, white America needs to trust that people of color have extensive experience living in this reality and that their assessment, yeah, they, exactly, Lloyd, they can't handle the truth and they run from it. It's, it's the fight or flight and they, I don't know if it's a character flaw, I don't know, but if you're white and you care, you'll educate yourself. I'm not expecting, I'm not, I don't think it's too much to ask. It's been centuries. We've had this problem for centuries. We created this problem. We did this. I don't do this out of guilt. I talk to white Americans because I'm pissed. This is ridiculous. We're living in a nation that is full of shit. A nation that promises all this stuff and espouses all this amazing stuff, but we don't have any intention of giving it. None whatsoever. It's, it's all, it's like the movie, the, oh, Anna, it's like the, I couldn't see that, the movie, The Purge. Yeah, I, I couldn't see that, but I, I know, I was like, no way, no way, way too realistic, you know? I just look at real life and that's a horror show enough for me, but yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. It's like, so anyway, the way one of my friends put it is this, and he did a great job. He said, just stop it. You have, if you, you have no clue what you're talking about. And he's referring to people who believe their opinion is equal or superior to an actual person who's living it. He said, just stop it. You're being super condescending and you have no clue what you're talking about. Um, usually that's my line. <laughs> but, and a lot of white folks get incredibly hurt by, by me. And I, I don't mean to make them hurt. I mean to make them think that it's not about your feelings. It's about someone else's feelings, not yours. And I don't mean to sound like a, like a horrible human for doing that, but if we're gonna change, we need to change our culture. That's my personal take. To get American culture to the point where systemic racism is abhorrent. Everybody thinks that. That's, oh, that's sick. That's the olden days when people were, you know, that's the dark ages to get people there believing that our culture, a culture like that is just, you know, unthinkable. We have to educate. And once people get there, there'll be no stopping equality. And that's just, you know, 
my take and not my personal take, but from what I've read. So my friend went on to tell me, and this is just yesterday, that essentially it's, you're being a fool. You're being a total fool and not just condescending, but you, you look like a fool when you say like, you know more than the person being abused. It's enraginalized and it's just ridiculous. Anyway, the last thing I'll say about that, and I'd love to hear what everyone thinks. What, what I really want to hear is, what are things people can do for you? I mean, detailed personal things um, that they can do to make your life a little less frustrating until everybody can unite through education and being human and come together and totally tear down systemic racism. I wanna know what, what we can do for you. Basically, personal stuff, what we can do for you. Things that happen all the time that just you just can't believe like and while I'm doing that wait, while waiting for people to you know give me some input if, if they don't mind um, I want to tell you a little bit about the yes Anthony it's yeah, very sad the Dunning-Kruger effect something that once I learned about that I was like my god like a whole world was opened up to me because it is basic I'll read what the dictionary says it is it's Cognitive bias, okay, I might have added a little bit to this. Um, it's a cognitive bias in which unskilled people or ignorant people, I'll just say it, believe their opinion is superior because they mistakenly rate their ability as better than it is. So that's what gets them, I promise this is the last thing I'm gonna say on this one, on this one pet peeve that I, I see over and over again. That's what gets them to think that they're this person. I saw Apollo 3. I have 13. I saw Apollo 13. Hi, Brenda. Thanks for watching. Um, I saw Apollo 13. Pfft. I've practically been to the moon. And then they're, they're arguing with this astronaut who's had numerous trips, walked on the moon, etc. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous, but they're holding their ground. They know better, you know? So I think it's the Dunning-Kruger effect that is some psychological, sociological thing that kind of, it's just part of being human. Thanks, Brenda. And, um, okay, I promised I'd be quiet about that. I want to know what happens to you or what's happened in the past. Just little things. Not completely deconstructing racism, because obviously it would be great, but that's, that's a system and not one, one person can't do it. Let's see. Hello. Oh, you know what? I need new context. Mocha. Hi, Mocha. Thanks for being here. I'm seriously like, I can't read. But um, thank you for being here. Dale, I live near the Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and the Ku Klux Klan is putting out handouts to recruit people. It came from the office either, recruit people. It came from the office in either South Carolina. Yeah, Dale, I've seen it. Actually, I've seen it in my own city twice where certain branches of these, you know, very, very, you know, these people are terrorists, basically. I'm just going to call them what they are. These terrorists. Hi, Ronnie. Thanks for watching. Um, they've been doing it all over, and it's it's surreal. But it's it's surreal. They've they've lost their fear. Um, the proud overt racist racists. It's really scary. But um, the next thing I wanted to get into and please if you know something like people do this and it bugs me or if people would just stop doing this it would help please let me know because this needs to be coming from people who live it and again it's pathetic that people might listen to me just you know the average white lady rather than the people who live it on a daily basis it's just that makes me sick but it's right now that's where we're at so eventually I would, and this might sound kind of strange, but I would love it if I talked less and, you know, maybe even get a telephone. I don't know what you guys think of that. So that people can actually just be in the conversation. But anyway, I'm gonna go on. Here's a strange thing. Um, yes, Brenda, I wanna read what, I know, I wanna read what Brenda has to say. Um, Brenda, if I can do it, I'm tired of the struggle but I will keep on fighting. I, I cannot imagine, and that's a great point. I don't know about you guys, but 
I didn't think this would, I mean, obviously we've been doing this for centuries, but the current climate is completely out of control. I thought that we'd have him out. I thought that people would be educated. I thought, I mean, I guess I just, uh, I overestimated um, things. I cannot imagine what it feels like to be a non-white person in this, this climate. I mean, just to hang on and keep hope. But I really, really hope everyone hangs on and keeps hope because I'm gonna, and I know this is doable. We just have to get enough people to, to get it, education. Until it can come from top down by government people who get it and can make laws and put out educational legislation that everybody will be educated. It's gonna have to be bottom up like this, just people talking to people who tell other people and it's a slow process, but to destroy systemic racism, to destroy the foundation of our nation, it's gonna, you know, unless we can get the most wealthy white elite to somehow stop making propaganda so that they get rich and nobody notices that they are the ones that are getting people um, in middle America and uh, you know everyone else who's not wealthy, they're the ones destroying our lives by making us not be able to make ends meet, not be able to afford any type of lifestyle that's you know, even decent. And while they keep having white people believing that it's people of color that are destroying everything they want. They, they love to keep that facade up so that nobody unites and sees, guess what? It's the richest 1% who are running the show with the lies. So until that happens, bottom-up education is imperative. It's gonna get... S um, Anthony, some believe that if they don't hate another race, then they are not raised. Right. Anthony, it's a great point. I, I think what you're trying to say, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that people, hi Keith, thank you. People don't think they're racist. If, well, I don't hate, I don't hate black people, so I'm not racist. Well, you know what? That's really lovely and everything. And, and that's good that you don't hate black people. I don't know what to say to that, but that's, doesn't mean you're not racist. I mean, as I said before, and, and a lot of people fight, fight this, implicit bias is a form of racism. Every person has implicit bias who's white. Um, our society, you know, created it. The culture America was created and founded and, you know, made wealthy by was white supremacy. We're born into it. Leslie, and then I'm going to try to go back to, okay, 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 let's be truly honest here. Racism will only go out of existence when it's almost impossible to think when look at a Super Bowl team and you oh when it's almost I think what you're trying to say is it's almost impossible to to, to like you can't fathom being racist like it's gonna be a ton of people not 10% it's gonna be when so many people unite from every marginalized historically marginalized group historically oppressed group all their allies all the people who who know the truth and want to speak the truth and get out of this bullshitting lie we live in America. Everyone unites. It's gonna to have to be a lot of people. Bottom up takes a lot. Top down by government forcing the laws might not change people's hearts, but it can slowly, by generation, force the behavior, okay? And of course, they come up with ways around it, but they will force a certain behavior. And sometimes people who do a certain behavior sampling to others. I'm a behavioralist, obviously, so I kind of get into it, but, and I want to read what Leslie says. Like the Super Bowl team, you never want to give up that trophy. The trophy is a, the trophy is racism to white people. And if you're not actually playing on the team, you are one of the biggest fans. You're being one of the biggest fans by not saying anything. Again, as I said once before, when white people start standing up and saying enough is enough, 
I hope that this happens. Oops. I hope that happens, but let's keep it real. I know we need to start somewhere and we, oh, thank you. You don't have to thank me ever, but thank you. I, you know what? I just have a big mouth and I cannot stand injustice. <laughs> just, I can't take it. It's more painful for me to live in a nation that, that does this, lives a freaking lie and doesn't think twice about it than to, it, it helps me. So I'm actually pretty selfish. I need people to understand this. I can't stand, this is all, see, it's all about me. Just like, <laughs> it's all about me, but thank you, Leslie, thank you. Let me see what else. Um, yep, Melanie, uh, America was built on propaganda. You got it. Thanks, Anthony. Dale, yep, we need to get money out of the, out of, oh God, absolutely, money out of politics. And until we do that, it's, yeah, they, exactly. Um, it's the same with healthcare. It's the same. I'm just trying to read yours until we get single parent. Yeah, it's you guys. I hate to say it, but you're completely right. It's all about the money. Um, it's like when I think about the NRA and I know I'm way off topic here. When I think about the NRA, I think, you know what? How about the NRA over here? Everyone else put all their money in a pool and pay off these people to do unconscionable, make unconscionable laws that destroy people. Hi, Anna. Thank you for being here. Um, the black man gets cake Kemmers to disavow by befriending. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. I've seen that video. It's, it's awesome. And pff, thank you. That is a fantastic, um, thanks, Melanie. I just, I don't, thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. Here, I'm going to go on to the very next thing. Thank you. Anybody who has input, just. I will try to read it. I'm still learning. Long learning curve here for me. But um, I, wanna, I want your voices heard. It's not just me yakking. Um, the second thing I want to talk about that is kind of a thing, and you, can, you tell me if it's a thing. Um, white folks, often when they first meet a person of color or someone who doesn't look like them, they have this crazy need to, and I don't mean crazy as in classic crazy. I mean, it's just... It's such a common thing. So, and excuse me for saying that word because it, anyway, I'll be quiet. They have a need to divulge their own personal history, their history of relationships they've had with people of color the second they meet them. Um, like, you know, my mother, sister's brother's aunt's um, girlfriend's cousin was black. So I know all this stuff. It's like they want to try to make themselves feel comfortable with. The topic today is things white Americans can do, and everyone can do, to help make life a little less frustrating for people of color and for black people in America. Little things, not giant things that require, you know, this intense knowledge of history, but just little things. So you meet somebody who's black, don't go up to them and, and try to like make them feel those cra oh those crack me yeah yeah I know I know <laughs> but I know it's like I'm making fun of it but it's I think some of my friends are really really hurt by it because they're like oh my god this is so embarrassing like I've seen people do it um thank you I appreciate you got to thank you for being thank you for thank you and I know I'm gonna pronounce your name wrong Hetep I'm gonna try I tried thank you you are wonderful you're gonna have to give teach me how to to say your name right. Thank you so much for your support and being here. Thanks. But um, this is a thing. The people, they're doing it for themselves. If you're a white person, you go up to somebody and say like, oh, I, date, I dated black people. But, uh, come on, you don't know the person. TMI, stop it. You know, it's like, don't tell them about how connected you are to the black experience or the brown experience or the indigenous experience right off the bat, get to know them. Say hello, exchange names, just, man, I'm not trying to be condescending, just, you're not gonna get them to think you're one of the good guys until they think you're one of the good guys. And even then, a lot of people of color and black Americans and African Americans, they don't trust white people and they never will. And I personally, I don't blame them, not one bit. So I guess the, the point is on this one, avoid telling people how you have a black friend. You dated a black person. Your cousin's uncle's sister's friend's, you know, 
stepfather. It's just stop. Um, okay. <laughs> I beat you to it. Oh, good. Um, look, black people need to just support each other. Say hello. St need to just support each other. Say hello. Start random conversations. Don't, uh, just say how are you. Just be, I think what you're saying, and tell me if I'm wrong, just be friendly. Um, I think one of fantastic point, absolutely. I know one of my friends um, is always telling me when they go to a work site, they rarely feel included. And uh, <laughs> I, they rarely feel included and maybe they're the only person of color there and people don't give them the time of day. I mean, they're not necessarily nasty to them and walk up to them and say nasty things, but they, the silence of, of being excluded. And there's one thing right there. White Americans can maybe have a little extra sensitivity to the fact that, I mean, and not go overboard and fake, but um, I'm talking about maybe just be inclusive and, and actually say, hey, we're going to lunch. Do you want to go? You know, just reach out. Stop the fear. Go overboard like you would with any person you didn't know or someone that maybe doesn't look like you or maybe somebody doesn't speak your language. Make sure they're included. It's, it's not rocket science. It's being thoughtful. Just being thoughtful. Okay? Let's say you go a little overboard and they think you're trying too hard. I'd rather be accused of trying too hard than then have someone quit the job or go home feeling like crap because the white people there made them feel like a second-class citizen. I mean, this is what I'm hearing from my friends. Oh, they, they try and treat us like we are just, oopsie, just a matter of taking up space and they and they don't see a, they, I've heard that too. I, God, that kills me to think about. Yes, Melanie, he's saying, or she's saying, I cannot see your picture, sorry. They try and treat us like we're just a matter, taking up space, but they don't see us. It's like, yeah, exactly it. Go out of your way to make someone feel comfortable. That's what white people need to do. And that's my opinion. That's my very, thank you, sorry. I thought so, but I wasn't sure. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so none of that, I have a black friend, I did, just get to know them. And if it comes up in conversation, ta, you know, that's great, but don't just throw it at them. Okay, killing that point. Does anyone have anything they want to say? Things that just in your everyday little things just make you feel like crap because you just go home going, you know what? I didn't need that shit. I didn't need that. Um, because I'm just naming things that people have told me, but I want to know what you think. Um, I'll go on to number three. Okay, and this is one I actually saw a video on. I saw a video on this that was hilariously uncomfortable. Okay, hilariously uncomfortable. And I'm going to ask um, Nathaniel. Racism needs to be addressed like drug and alcohol addiction. It's the hidden sickness that many people don't understand. Oh my God, that is, that's a fantastic point. Some people say it's like a disease. I've heard, you know, professors and it's like a disease. Very good, good point. And when we do do that, I think we're gonna see, you know, that's, that's again, when we see it top down from governments and people in power who say, this is something we need to be educated on, there's gonna be no stopping equality, none. We know how to stop racist, racism in people through education, and that will eventually deconstruct with all the masses saying, no, we're not doing this anymore. It will deconstruct the systemic racism. But because right now, we have never had a time in our history where starting in preschool, Children are put through extensive, comprehensive programs that teach them, actually teach them exactly how this happened, how to stop it, how to support equality. I mean, this isn't rocket science. I keep saying that. We just don't want to have it. 
And when I say we, I mean the white people who run the, who run the uh, government. They don't want that. That'll stop all their fun. They're choosing greed over our humans. They need to keep us thinking that they need to keep white masses thinking that people of color are the reason for all our trouble. They are not going to start a program like I'm suggesting and like Nathaniel's suggesting a, a, a real educational program top down. Um, they're not going to do it. Um, the top down, the government, uh, Lloyd, the top means the government needs to, right, needs to label these people as domestic terrorists and be forced to deconstruct them. They're criminals. Absolutely. In fact, I would go, I know people think, oh, that crazy, angry soccer mom lady. I truly believe that systemic racism is a crime against humanity. Not even a close call, my opinion. Brenda, white folks don't, yeah, they don't want to give up their white privilege. And you know what's, exactly, Brenda, they don't want to give up their white privilege. And I don't know, maybe I'm not thinking right. Tim, hi. I think white America, yes, white America likes it that way. They, yeah, in general, and, and obviously I'm, I'm speaking in uh, generalities, but we live in a system of white supremacy and it rules every single facet of our lives. Hi, Tim. Thank you for being here. I'm excited to see you. I mean, watch it to see your writing. Um, but yeah, we, we got to get educated so that people come to think it's unconscionable to have this barbaric ideology that because of your, you know, active melanated skin, somebody, that's ridiculous. They need to be like, my God, that is like, they need to laugh in the face of it and, and be at the point where pff, that's something from a history book, like a million years ago when people were really, really ignorant. There's going to be no stopping equality people of color and people in historically marginalized groups unite together with allies and educated people who aren't going to stand for this anymore. Brandy, I want to read what you have to say. Thank you for being here. The more of our people that take a stand for people of color, the easier it will be in the end. Absolutely. Fantastic point. That's why I do this. Even if somebody sees me and goes, oh, who's that, you know, like, that white lady saying all this stuff and thinks she knows everything and all that. Even if they see, they see a average person not afraid to talk about real racism and real discrimination and real harm. And I live, I'm going to live through it. I'm going to live to see the end of this live show. And then they'll see, like, I'm just hoping maybe they'll see it as an example of just, I'm not famous. I'm just some average person talking about it. And that's, what we have to do to get our our white masses we're, we're ignorant and I don't mean that to be rotten it's we don't know much and a lot of us don't want to know much and we say I mean we say oh I'm I'm a I'm not racist well, I've never met anyone who says they're racist I mean maybe like a Ku Klux Klan member but I've never met them but white people will never say they're racist because they don't understand what it means it's a dirty word but honestly once people drop their egos, white America, drop your egos. It just, it's not about us. Look, delve into yourself. Delve into who you are as a person. Self-improvement. Don't we all want to, you know, look at what you do, why you do it, and say, you know what? I'm going to do better. Don't be insulted when someone calls you out on being racist or, or don't go, oh, they use the R word. No, 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 no. Think, okay, it hurts. Yes, it hurts your feelings. I mean, obviously it does, but then go, okay, okay, just drop your, so you know what? I'm going to learn something from it. I, I messed up. I'm going to learn something from it. Um, I'm just reading here. Timothy, we need to dismantle the machine. No more talking. We have to spend our money. Um, we don't have to spend our, exactly. We don't have to spend our money in white America. Exactly. And I am going to get to that. Um, I'm going to keep going on some of these points and that is coming up because that's huge because there's examples over time. People of color and black Americans are perfectly capable of getting the equality they deserve 
and have deserved forever and always. But if white people could jump in, it would be really nice because we might help speed it up because this is taking too long. This is killing people. 2018. Need I say more? My God, look at the, the we have the de facto leader of the, the modern Ku Klux Klan in our freaking White House. Um, this shouldn't be happening. I could go on and on, but I won't. Okay, let us, thank you, Tim, that is absolutely true. So here's one that I was going to talk about. I just got to watch the time. Here's what I was going to talk about um, that I saw in a video, and the video was hilariously uncomfortable. Hilariously uncomfortable, I mean like cringeworthy, because it was so true. It was so true. And what it is is don't walk up to people and as a way to say hello, try to guess their ethnicity or their background. Don't say, where are you from? And then when they say America, like you or whatever, say, no, where are you really from? I mean, basically what you're saying is, you don't belong here. Tell me where you're really from. It's just rude. These are just basic things. Um, let me just, Brenda, as long as we have a white supremacist in the White House, we're screwed. Yeah, yeah. We need to keep our money in our own neighborhoods. Absolutely. Lakeisha, can you up your volume? I can't hear. Yes, I can try. My volume's at the top. I don't know if that'll help or not. I can also try to talk louder if that if that helps. Sorry about that. My volume's at the top. I just did. Thank you. Um, Brandy, it hurts our feelings being called racist by people of color. Um, how the hell do you think people of color feel when they have to live the life of being, oh, okay, you're saying, okay, you're saying that people of color call you racist, when, when people of color call white people racist, immediately they get their feelings hurt, and let me just read the rest, sorry, I'm not trying to jump into here, um, how do you think, how the hell do you think people of color feel when they have to live the life of being judged constantly, not just when being called out for racism, I don't know, I've lost family members for calling them out on privilege. Um, calling them out on the privilege all have, all having been pale skin. Yeah, here's, I'll address that. Um, I don't know if I'll do it exactly how you're saying, but Brandy, yes. Oh my God, yes. I, th I think this is what she's trying to say, is when white people, and this is obviously in general, a lot of white people get so hurt by being called racist, that the first thing they do is make it about them. Like, oh, I'm so hurt. And, and that's probably a natural thing to do, but as white folks who care, we need to say, okay, wow, you feel, you don't ever want to be thought of as racist, but if we would, white folks would stop thinking of racist as one thing and a huge continuum, like, let me think. Somebody was telling me the other day, and I wish I could remember what it was. It was the best analogy. Um, like anything else, having a mental, mental illness, having a disability, having, having just not knowing, not being a great reader. There's way over here where you are almost amazing, but just not quite there to way over there where, you know, there's a huge continuum range. Being racist isn't one thing. It's a giant lifetime continuum filled with millions and millions of things. Some of being racist is simply from our society that we're born into, that we come to understand before we even can think. When we're little, little kids, we're conditioned. We're enculturated into it. Um, okay, I'm getting off topic, Tiffany. Um, oh, Tim. My boss told me that she doesn't, okay, my boss told me that we're getting to the end. She doesn't see color and only blue, green, yellow, and he, you were insulted by that. Oh my God. That's, that's something that I'm going to talk about in, in just a minute and we'll get into that. Yeah, it's, don't say that. I think what Tim's saying is, he's saying, this is what hurts me. Don't say that. It's not helping. Thank you, Tim. That's fantastic. And I'm a dark skinned. I'm a dark-skinned black person, not green, not blue, not gold, maybe, whatever. See his, I'm sorry, Shh. Yeah, okay, yeah, it's like, 
it's almost like making a parody of it. Don't don't say stuff like that. Um, polka dotted, striped. It's it's bullshit, you know. Um, okay, NFL is coming back. And what should we? Yes, Le Leslie. Yes, the NFL, and that's going to be a whole. Maybe you can help me write up that show because that's a whole show in and of itself. Thank you. Um, Lloyd says, turn the channel. It gets easier. Okay. Dale. Quit acting like one, ra like one racist and vote for a party that is. Can you tell me what you mean by that, Dale? Because I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, Lakeisha says, don't watch the NFL. I mean, that's a... Yeah, and, and I actually know Leslie, and I know he knows that, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, boycott. I, there's tons, of, and that's, I really do want to do a live show and discussion about that. But I'm, I'm going to get going, because I want to keep everyone here. I just appreciate people sharing and watching this, and this is meant to be an open discussion where a white person, me, actually talks about real racism in real time and lives through it. As a role model, I'm the average person. I'm not a famous person. I'm just the average person. But I want to live in a society that not only talks about, you know, yaks about liberty and justice for all, but actually affords it to all. Actually gives it to all. Purposefully wants everyone to have it. Um, alas, the video has frozen up on me. Oh, Keith, I'm sorry. Um, thank you for standing up for people of color. Frankie, my honor, you never need to thank me. I, I'm just selfish and I do it for me because I can't stand. I can't stand living in, <laughs> Tim, you're fine. I can't stand living in a culture that is full of shit. We say, oh, we have justice and liberty for all. It's like, yeah, right. Now, that, that's said the white person, said the wealthy white person, and we'll get into that later. Um, thank you, Lloyd. <laughs> I just want the word to get out. I want the word to get out and for white America to know we're done. It's time to step up to the plate and start supporting equality for everybody. Dale. Right, quick, exactly. That's a beautiful point. And, and I don't mean to be rude or, or blunt, but Dale, thank you. Quit acting like a racist and you won't be called one. Quit voting Republican and quit voting for people who are, um, I stopped reading what you, <laughs> start voting for people who are humane. Personally, I'm not a Republican, I'm not a Democrat. I'm a humanist. And I don't mean that arrogantly and sanctimoniously, but I don't care what party the person is. If they stand up for my fellow humans of America and the entire world, and they take people over greed, I don't care what they call their party because people can self-profess. Oh, I'm a this, I'm a that, I'm a liberal. They can be a fake liberal. I mean, you know, I don't care what they call themselves. I care what they do and what their actions show they do. Um, okay, I promised I'm going to get back to the points here because there are a couple, some that Tim brought up who really wanted to say some stuff and I was going to get to those. So I'm going to get to those. Thank you so much for um, an independent voter, Lakeisha. Thank you. Um, yeah, there's Brenda, there's no such thing as liberty and justice for all. Absolutely not. Okay, I promised I'll stop. Both parties take from people of color. Yep, no, it's, okay, I promise I'm gonna focus. Okay, don't question, when you meet somebody, that are, the, the top today is everyday things that white people and, and other people can think about and do to make life a little less frustrating for people of color and black people and brown people and everybody by just being thoughtful. These aren't life changing, but they are life, they're life changing as they add up because they do change lives, quality of lives, okay? So when you're talking to somebody, don't question people's blackness, period. Just don't do it. Saying like stuff like, um, I don't even think of you as black or it just, all that's doing, that's a giant statement about you and who you are. I don't think about you as, I don't think of you as black, what the hell? And you might as well have just said, you know, being black is the worst thing ever. And don't worry, I don't think of you like that. I mean, it's embarrassing. It's just embarrassing. Um, so, and if you, just to add in, if you have friends who are 
kind of there, but not there. Sit and watch this with them. I mean, if they will, if they really care, they'll sit and if they want to see a white person, just, this isn't rocket science. I didn't make any of this stuff up. This is all stuff from academia and from, from my friends and, and from hundreds and hundreds of people over the years who have been honored me, honored, honored me by telling me their true feelings, knowing that I care and I'm going to listen and I'm going to take it to heart. And I'm going to try to, you know, as I said earlier, it's pathetic. People will listen to me, some average white lady, over the people who live this every single day. That's pathetic. But anyway, I digress here. Um, another thing white folks can do. Um, thank you, Dol thank you, Dolphus, and thank you for watching. And thank you, everybody, for sharing this. Get it to the people who need it. I'm not saying this to hurt people. I don't want to hurt people, but it's the truth. I speak the truth, well, I try to speak the truth in whatever I do. So why would I stop now? Why would I, well, I'm gonna speak truthfully about everything, but oh, this racism thing, you know, the systemic thing that we all, all us white folks kinda, you know, have bought into, I'm gonna lie about that. I mean, it's ridiculous. Of course I'm gonna speak the truth about this. Timothy, a lot of wives try to make me feel comfortable by telling me that they have a black, oh. oh, okay, I think this is what you're trying to say, Tim. A lot of people try to make Tim feel comfortable by saying, oh, well, my husband's black or my, I, right. And we talked about that a little bit at the beginning. Don't, don't do that. That's not making Tim feel comfortable. Thank you for that example. Thank you. That's not making Tim feel comfortable. That's making the person feel comfortable. That's kind of TMI-ish and kind of strange. Thank you. To not see differences between us is to diminish their existence, said Tim. We should celebrate the diversity in each other's culture. Absolutely. My spell check is out of control. I know. Tim, my spell check is in Spanish, so I absolutely understand. It's literally in Spanish, and it keeps going back, and anyone who wants to help me on that, feel free. Just a side note. Thank you. Exactly. Don't tell people all about your, you know, intimate life's history upon meeting them, and that's not going to get you guys together. Um, okay, let me go on. Another thing white folks can do is really simple. Educate yourself. Ta-da, I said it. Learn how to debunk the most common denials of racism that are really propaganda fed in by the people in power, and that is white, wealthy, wealthy elites. Those are the ones, they make the rules, they pay off politicians, and they want people who are in the white masses to believe that it's people of color, specifically black Americans, African Americans, brown Americans, who are to blame for every single solitary problem they have. And the fact is, it is total propaganda and total bullshit, okay? But they have to keep that going because otherwise we'll unite and overthrow these people who absolutely have it going right now. They have the laws switched so they get rich. Everything's working in their favor. They get rich by keeping us all, you know, kind of divided. We're making them rich and they're loving every minute of it. Okay. Th Good road. Thank you so much. And Lakeisha, um, just being married to a black person doesn't mean that they aren't racist. Absolutely. They think they aren't, but they, they're just using that for their own agenda. Yeah. Um, it's, it's true. It, you know, it's great to be married to a black person. I'm not like saying it's not a great thing, but don't say you're not racist. If you're white folks divide and keep conquering Timothy. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Anna and people voted. Oh, and pe people voted to keep them rich. Yes, they did. Good point, Anna. Absolutely. <laughs> Trump wasn't going to tear down. He, he was going to bring in his clan members, which is what he did. Um, but, um, Okay, learn to, uh, going back to this point I was saying, white folks learn to debunk. These. There's only like, you know, a handful of classic denials. Learn to tear them up. Learn to, I mean, and I don't mean, you don't have to be mean about it. Just say, you know, you can be perfectly nice and say, I'm sorry, that's factually incorrect. Let me, let me try to explain to you what's, you know, I'm not saying you have to be, uh, oh, your video, oh, it, it unfroze, Keith, good. 
<laughs> I love you, Keith. You're awesome. Okay. I'm so happy. Thanks for, for staying sick and through it. Um, you don't have to be wrong about it. It's history. It's the facts. It's the truth. And um, practice. If you're white, practice. Practice learning about these denials and learning how to debunk them. Because when the time comes, if you're white, unless you're really special, it's going to be very, very stressful. You're not going to just have it. you you got to practice these things. Saying you're not racist because X, Y, and Z is black is like saying I don't, I don't hate, like saying I don't hate dogs, I have a cat. Ooh, that actually kind of rhymes. Thank you. Thank you, Brandy. Thank you. That actually kind of rhymed. Was that an accident or is it? That's, that's awesome. Yep. It's like saying I'm not a misogynist. I love my mom. It's like, okay. It's just another denial. But, um, so learn how to debunk them and you will set any, now remember when you are white and you're going to debunk some ludicrous cliche thing that somebody's saying to deny racism because of course most of us know the new racism now is to deny there is racism whole other subject you're gonna set an example for the room and it's gonna be awesome but please be aware your room's gonna be silent you're gonna have an audience the minute you do it and I mean <laughs> this is kind of from experience you will shut that room up faster than there is nothing that shuts up in my opinion a room of white folks than you talking about racism. Okay, so you're gonna have an audience and so you're gonna need to be confident and feel good and really get what you're saying. Um, okay, Brenda, I know a judge married to a black woman. He's the most racist, um, uh, sorry for the language, no, it's okay, I swear all the time, um, I've ever met, yeah. It, it's lovely to, to specifically like one person and say they're black, but having a black friend, relative, husband, whatever, you gotta be educated still, or you're still, we, we still all live in a society that from birth upholds white supremacy. You aren't going to, you aren't going to become educated from our culture. It's not going to happen. The education you'll get from our culture is the opposite. It is what the people in charge, the elite, want you to become educated in. It's not going to be in humanism. It's not going to be in how to destroy systemic racism. Okay. Anna, the vote against our own interests because they think it's... Yes, 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 yes. Anna, I think what you're saying is a lot of white folks vote against their own... They vote against people of color and black folks own interest because they're like, yeah, you know, I'm gonna, they're the problem. They're voting against their own best interest. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what you're saying. I hope that's right. Correct me if I'm wrong. You vote for, for taking away people's health care. What do you think's gonna happen to you? <laughs> Yours is gonna get taken away. And a lot of people are finding out that. And it's, the way I look at it is they literally like being racist more than they care about their own plight their own best interest. That's pretty damn racist, okay? You love being racist so much that you'll actually give your vote and support against your own personal best interest. That's insane. I, I'm sorry, that's, that's something, that's a, that's a disorder, that's, that's disease. Um, let me do a slication, let me see. I wanna make sure I'm getting everyone. Ah. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Avil, Avalin. Oh, I'm terrible. I'm a phonics specialist, so oops. Okay, Avalon. Avalon. I'm gonna say Avalon. Thank you for being here. And you can tell me how to pronounce your name sometime because I know I'm messing it up. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here. I want to kind of get going because I want to wrap this up, and. You guys, when people in historically marginalized groups and their allies and their educated supporters unite, there is going to be no stopping equality, okay? Even if the top down won't do it, the masses have power in number and power in education. That's why people can't stand uh, trying to influence educated people in a court of law because they actually think, hi, Wayne. Thank you so much for being here. They actually think for themselves and they don't want that. They want somebody they can influence. 
like a second, like Bacon's Rebellion. Yep. That one, it means my father is the most high. It means my father is the most high. Your name? Wait. It, you got to explain that one out. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I didn't quite get that, but t tell me. Hi, Anna. Thank you for being here. I'm excited to see you. I'm, I'm going to move on to, hi, Wayne. I'm going to move on to um, the next thing. And remember, this particular live video is talking about not huge, giant, you know, mm -hmm. deconstructing systemic racism, because, yes, of course, that's the goal, but talking about little, everyday, simple, thoughtful things white people can do. I'm a, I'm a mess, Avalon. I'm, I'm a mess. Don't even, don't mind me. I hope I'm entertaining you. Um, little simple things that we can do to make life just a little less frustrating while we're all waiting to get the de facto leader of the modern KKK out of our White House. Just little things we can do. So the next one, don't tell people of color what is or isn't racist. Just don't. It's... It's like, oh my God, it makes you look horrible. It's, don't do it. It's such an insult. Um, I'm gonna use an example from my friend who told me that the other day that basically, my friend's boss uh, publicly called my friend a bully while he was at work. Um, hey Marvin, thank you for watching. Um, my friend said, that's pretty racist. And the person said, no it's not. She's a white lady, acting like she I mean, how would she know what's racist? She, she's, she doesn't know what's racist. Um, I mean, it's as if she doesn't understand that our culture's propagandist drive to keep the stereotype of the angry black person alive. He had done nothing wrong, yet she publicly called him a bully, and he's like, what did I do even? It's like, he, he spoke loudly, or he, I mean, she's telling him that's not racist. Are you kidding me? How in the world would a white person, how would she know what's racist and what's not? That is the, it's like telling someone one time, I have another friend who somebody told them to chill out and be cool when someone called them the N-word. How dare they? How dare they? I mean, my God, talk about insensitivity. What a, it's just sick. Um, Let's, Obama and the Affordable Health Healthcare Act is the same, but when white people hear Obamacare, they voted against IGS. Oh my God, you're brilliant, Leslie. Yep, a lot, as it turned out, a lot of white folks didn't know it was the same thing. They were completely against it when it had to do with our first, um, you know, black president. But when they heard it was just, you know, affordable health care, that was cool. I mean. This is the strength and level and depth of racism in America. Take what you think. If you're white, take what you think people know about racism. Take what you think people know about racism and multiply it by a gazillion. And what, they, what you think they, and subtract it by a gazillion. If you think they know stuff, subtract it by, you know, divide it by a gazillion. They know nothing. And the reason I know this is because I work with white folks and they don't know nothing on purpose, but they don't know what they know. So it's, you would be, sh what I'm trying to say is you'd be shocked, absolutely shocked at what some white folks, I actually had white people say, scream at me for saying the word black. Literally go, oh, don't say that, don't say that. And like freaked me out. Cause I, I thought maybe some, I'm like, they know they're black, I'm allowed to say it's not a dirty word. Like, I was like, what the freaking, oh my God. They don't say that. I'm like, I actually mumbled, they know they're black, it's okay. Like, they made it like a dirty word. I have had, I had somebody said, what do you mean kidnapped from their homes and dragged from their civilizations and forced to inhumane status? I'm like, slavery? These were people, humans. They're like, kidnapped? I'm like, I've had people, white folks, say this to me, okay? Do not overestimate what white folks know. And I mean, I'm preaching to the choir, but I'm actually talking to white folks right now because everything I do is for getting white folks to get on board and drop their ego. Um, 
There are, oh, Lakeisha, yeah, there are 900 hate groups in America, Kim, and did you know they are organized crime and they keep arsenals of, oh, absolutely, absolutely. One of the videos I do actually shows, I say, yeah, no white person's ever racist. You know, they never, there's no white racists. There's no white racists. Then what about this? <laughs> I hold up this, you know, this modern day, it's basically a poster of every hate group and their origins in America. And there's a gazillion of them. Yeah, but we don't have any racists. Now, I absolutely, Lakeisha, I know exactly what you're saying. It's nobody will say they're racist. Well, of course, it's a bad word, but oh, are they ever, are we ever? And until we, I mean, we're not even there yet. We're not even there yet, but. Another suggestion, support black voices, black businesses, and help be supportive of the black economy. Black economy. Um, this is, most people are not aware, most white folks, they have no idea that they're not aware of the extent that black people today, as we breathe and speak, are kept, purposely kept, from accumulating wealth and joining in this American dream stuff, okay? Redlining is just the beginning. Red, you know, redlining from long ago, current redlining that still occurs every day in America. Study Black Wall Street if you're white. Black Wall Street. I mean, really study it. Don't just, you know, don't just look it up and whatnot. Read a couple articles on it, and I'll, I always try to post a few things here and there. Understand the power differential that oppresses upward mobility for black folks and people of color. To understand that is so key. And it's kind of an advanced concept because you have to already get a lot of other stuff. But if you're white, think about that and study Black Wall Street. And there's tons of other examples, but Black Wall Street is the most, it's heartbreaking. It's really shows the system. We whites aren't going to let them win. That's basically what what it said to me we will not let them succeed yet they succeed still so don't get me <laughs> anyway um 400 black businesses are doing well in entre yes entrepreneurship and that's something to, i'd love to study more about because of systemic racism and personal racism and, and the white america's denial total denial um overall of everyday interactions and, and whatnot. People of color, black people, brown people, indigenous people, they, they don't wanna be abused. They don't wanna to go to work every day to get their money and the price is abuse. They start their own businesses and they're very, very good at it. So making sure you, I have a bunch of friends who are starting our entrepreneurs and nothing's gonna stop them from total success. So. Definitely, if you're white and you really are getting this stuff, there are places you can find out where to support black businesses, black owned businesses, and you can do that. And you can pick and choose. And you know what, your money talks. Just like with um, when people were, when they still are, uh, transgender people were getting horrific, horrific discrimination. Um, Target said, every one of our stores is gonna be open to every single person who needs to use the bathroom. I do not care how they were born, they get to use the bathroom and we're not, and that was like huge. I go to Target now, that's what I do. I go there and webuyback.com. Anna, thank you, webuyback.com. I'm now going to uh, list a couple more things that people have told me over the years. Um, this one's really obvious, if someone has an accent or is speaking broken English per se, be patient if you're white, you know, whatever you speak, you're monolingual or whatever, be patient and humble. Try asking yourself, do you speak two languages really well? Are you bilingual, are you trilingual? Don't say, oh, they're stupid, they're, you know, they're wasting my time, think, damn, they must have really worked their ass off to try to learn a second language. That they're not perfect, it takes like seven to eight years to truly be conversationally good and a bunch more to be academically um, education, you know, able to work in your same aged field. Um, Aval Avalon, thank you, yes, I do, good. So I'm just, things to think of. 
don't play devil's advocate with people of color and black people. Don't. They don't need that crap. If you're white, don't do it. It's... Uh, working on my... Oh, my goodness. Maybe you can tell. Okay, that's awesome. Working on your fourth language. Dang, I'm jealous. Okay. Um, don't play devil's advocate. Don't say, I'm just playing devil's advocate. That's like saying, I'm just being a total asshole. Okay? I got to end this because I'm, I'm going on and on. Um, anything, anything anyone wants to say. Um, okay, here's one. Don't be disgusted or in shock when black people say, you're racist for voting for someone who upholds racism. Don't be shocked. I get that all the time. What? I'm not racist. It's like, no, actually you are. You are adding to the problem. If you were able to give a politician a pass on their racist, cruel, discriminatory ideology, you are the racist too, okay? So slap that look of shock off your face. And I know that sounds mean, Thank you, Anna. I know that sounds mean, but I'm sorry. Being nice doesn't cut it in this business. The business of educating people who don't truly want to be educated. And I'm not, in, in real life, I'm, I'm actually a fairly nice person, but they don't listen. White folks will not listen unless it's a little bit riveting. So I'll just name a last couple of things and then I'm gonna say thank you to everybody. Um, if anyone has any, thank you, Anna. You, I'm just so thrilled. I want to quickly ask you if you want to support my attempt to educate white America and teach white Americans how to truly support people of color, black people, African Americans, indigenous people by listening to their words and educating their family, their friends, everybody to get everybody on board to understand. Please help me by getting your friends and family and you and whoever to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I have, it's blunt, it's, some are in your face, some aren't, but what happens is they move up your videos to be better seen by other people. And that is my ticket to getting it out there because it's really hard to, in this divisive environment, not just have my videos and my talk stuff, go to people who like, know it better than me. Um, I don't know if the time this brings up, but I have a friend since high school who, um, up until a year ago, acted blindly racist, but when she expressed interest in our group and racism and bigotry and inequality in our lifetime, that's the group that I founded and that Keith's actually a, uh, an admin and a wonderful admin. Over the long course of the year, she has gone from total denial to accepting that she has white privilege and that Thank you, thank you, yes, thank you, Keith. Over time, our group has been going on for a number of years. We take people who are literally like raised by KKK, and first they're, you know, really, they end up leaving the group at the end of a year or two. Hi, Clyde. Because they say, I just can't take this anymore. These ignorant, ignorant folks. They're saying, uh, I don't see color, I don't, and they're like, I can't take it, I'm leaving. And it's awesome because I think, oh my God, that's what you said when you came in. <laughs> so it's like really cool. But um, thank you, Keith. That's, yeah, I have platforms. I have something for everybody. If you need it hardcore, if you need it sensitively, if you one-on-one, -on -one, whatever you need, if you're white and you want to learn, it's out there. And I, I run a couple of the things and my YouTube channel isn't for everybody. It's hardcore, okay? There's a few nice ones, but not a lot. I have gone way over time and I cannot thank everybody enough. Um, I have about a hundred more because remember this was supposed to be a thousand ways um, white folks can right this second without knowing any racial history, not, they don't know their whitewashed history, they don't know anything, help make life less frustrating for black people, people of color, and people of color in America. So I'm going to end this. Barke. Thank you for Barke. Thank you for watching. Appreciate it so much. Um, if you believe in what I'm trying to do, just have a everyday white person talk about racism in an open setting. Please share and get your white friends and your family and get them to learn and then get them to teach everybody. Okay? We can do this from the bottom up. It just takes a long time, but right now it's kind of the only way. 
So I want to thank everyone for participating. After this, um, after I end our live show, I want people to please discuss this. If you need something, get a hold of me. This is what I do. And this is what I want to do. So thank you for participating. And there's a ton of other platforms, and I do videos that spotlight, you know, black folks that are, are passionate. I do a ton of other stuff. So look into how you can participate or be, you know, kind of at the center stage so your voice is heard. Um, and lastly, da -da 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 -da, um, I'm just thrilled to have you. Next Sunday will be another show. And thank you so much for giving me your time and caring enough to listen. All right? So get a hold of me if you want to. Message me. I might not be fast getting back to you, but I always get back to everybody. Okay? So thanks for being here. I hope you like the show. Now to turn this off. See you next week, I hope. <laughs>